My beloved brothers and sisters, I direct your attention to the book of Isaiah at the 40th chapter. And you do have a portion of the uh, scripture that we will use as a basis for our message today in the bulletin. However, I'm going to add to that, I'm going to add verses 30 and 31, although I have you reading from 27. So chapter 40, verse 27, 30 to 31. O oh, Jacob, how can you say, Lord does not see your troubles? O oh, Israel, how can you say, God ignores your rights? Have you not heard? Have you not understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youth will weak, become weak and tired, and the young men will fall in exhaustion. There's a different translation here, but the scripture says, but they that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar high on the wings of eagles. They will run and not go weary, and they will walk and not faint. I want to speak to you on the subject, the strength to carry on. The strength. Carry on. On yesterday, I was, as I stated earlier, was delighted to come and briefly participate in the uh, observation of the vaccines that were taking place across the street. And then I came over to the church and took care of a few things. And then I went to visit my friend who is confined due to a recent stroke that he had. And I visited him on several occasions and his spirit was very low on those occasions and I called him to uplift him. And as I went to visit him, I am reminded of something that we should all be mindful of. One day we can be just happy, doing fine and moving through the journey of a life with no interruptions and enjoying all of the blessings that we have received. But in one unexpected moment, something drastically can take place and it can change our condition. It can alter our life. And we find ourselves healthy one moment, but in the next moment, we find ourselves not even able to lift our arm. Every day, we should thank God for what we have. Every day, we should not take for granted just the small things that can become big when you have no abilities to do the things that you just take for granted. One day things are fine, and then the next day you find yourself dealing with restrictions and limitations. Unexpected challenges are now new in your life. He received a very lovely uh, get well card. Matter of fact, it came from a member of our church. I took it over there, Sister Nix. And when we opened the card and he was reading it, it had uh, a scripture from the Psalms. And in that summit message, it encouraged him that even in his condition to look forward to the Lord and look to God for strength. 
And I said, my, this is so appropriate because the sermon that I'm working on is the strength to carry on. So God is saying to us, even in his word, that whatever our conditions are, we need to learn how to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not on our understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge him and he will direct our path. Psalms 91 tells us, God's word says that I will protect those I will protect those. I will look after those. I will cover those who call on me, call my name in a time of trouble. So in my prayer, I told him, just keep calling on the name of the Lord. Keep trusting in God. And God is our source and our way of attaining strength. Life has a way of taking away your strength. Let me say that once again. Because maybe you haven't experienced that. But sometimes the contrary winds of life can blow in your direction. And they have a way of taking away your strength. Anybody ever had life just drain you? Just, have you ever felt sometimes that life just came in and caused you to hit a rock? It has a way of just taking away your strength. And those winds, you don't expect them, but they will blow from the north, the south, the east, and the west. They will come from all directions. Yes. One of the things that I enjoy, of course I always enjoy teaching the Bible, but we're on a, uh, a Bible class called The Journey Through the Bible on a Wednesday night. And we've been studying that section of the gospel message that is recorded by Matthew. And we've uh, accomplished a good understanding of the life of Jesus because he also found himself constantly dealing with contrary winds. Yes. Oppositions, unexpected oppositions coming from different directions. Those Pharisees and Sadducees were on him all the time. And I wondered about the energy of anyone to sustain themselves in the midst of that opposition when all they are doing is good, but yet and still, the contrary winds were blowing. Now what's really amazing to me is that Jesus would tell his disciples this, they would watch all these miraculous things that he was doing. And then one day he inquired to them, who do they say that I, the son of God, am? Son of man am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus told them, don't tell anybody about that. What? Don't tell anybody that I am the Christ, the Son of the living. Don't tell anybody. And we wonder, especially during our time, why is it that Jesus did not want that to be told to the whole world? That's what we're doing right now, telling the whole world that he is the Christ. But he mentions something. The reason I don't want you to tell anybody right now is because I want it to be told after the resurrection. Don't tell them. They will observe all of my works before the resurrection, but don't tell them who I am until after the resurrection, because it is after the resurrection that the gospel receives its strength. It is after the resurrection that the gospel receives its power. It is after the resurrection that we look at this just not as written words on a page, but we see the strength of God to help us to carry on. Even when Jesus died and they gathered there and Jesus came to those group of disciples and told them, now don't go anywhere until the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And when the Holy Spirit 
comes upon you, then you can go out and prophesy. Then you can go out and baptize and teach the word of God. Because now the Holy Spirit is not going to come until after the resurrection. And after the resurrection, the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And that's when you have power and that's when you have strength to carry on. Anybody got the Holy Spirit today? Praise God. Are you living in the understanding of the after the resurrection impact that we have? See, Holy Spirit's power gives us strength. It is the power and the source of the miracles that we pray for. Holy Spirit, it inspires us to go on even when it don't look like we're going to make it. We are challenged to go on trusting in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, it gives us the strength to just carry on right in our weakest moment. We move forward. We don't turn back. We don't look down. We look up because we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to carry on. Now here in the scripture in Isaiah 40, God challenges us with a series of questions and in verse 26, in verse 26, he tells us, God challenges us, he says that, look up into the heavens. Who has created these things? That's the question. And many of you, sometimes you need to just get out, out at night by yourself and look up into the heavens. Look at all those beautiful stars. Look at the darkness of the night. And in the day, just look up. Look at the sun. Look at the moon. Look at the clouds. Look at the blue skies. And ask yourself the same question. Who has created all of these things? I saw this morning there's snow on the mountains. Who has created all of these things? Things. That's what the scripture is saying. He says, who brings out the host of stars in the middle of the midnight hour and know every star by name? Who does that? Who does that? Who brings them out and know them all? Who knows every hair on your head? Who, who does that? And the reason Isaiah is making that inquiry is because he wants us to be challenged with this thought. If God, if God has the strength to keep this universe in order and cause it to function without any problem for billions of years, and then that same God, that same God that can keep the universe, he can keep you and he can carry you through everything that comes your way. God can give us the strength to carry on. If he can operate all of that, whatever is going on in your life, God can handle it. God can carry you through this brief journey that we call life. I want to stay with the scriptures and now in verses 27 and 29, God, he asks a few other questions and you can listen to them. And I'm, I might have a different translation, but he said, God asks his people a series of questions and basically is, why do you, Jacob and Israel, why do you say my way is hidden from the Lord and my just claim is passed over? In the translation that we read, it reads, Oh, Jacob, how can you say that the Lord does not see your troubles? Oh, Israel, how can you say God ignores your right? Remember Jacob's 12 sons, and remember uh, the name is translated from Jacob to Israel. So what God is saying is this, my people listen. I have been listening to you and you have been saying that I don't see your troubles. Now let me pause right there. 
I've had some things happen to me in my life. And I've almost been in the same condition as old Israel. I wondered, where is God? Yes, yes. Have you ever had any of those, where yes. is God challenges? Yes. Where is God? Amen. When the storms of life are raging, and the fury falls on me. I wonder what I had done caused it to fall on me. That is what Israel is doing right now. He said, God, it looked like all this stuff that has been happening to me, all of my troubles, you don't seem to see them. God, in, in fact, it's almost like you're hiding yourself in the midst of my trials and my tribulation. And God, how is it that you continue to pass me by? Ignore all that I'm going through. We wonder why. You know, there is a misunderstanding that although we are Christians and we are children of God, don't think that trouble is going to pass you by. You're going to have your trials and your tribulations but the one thing that you need to know that separates you from everybody else is this verse here, verse 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Listen, have you not known? Don't you know this? You should have known this by now. Have you not heard? You mean to tell me you've been living in this world all this time and you haven't heard this? That the everlasting Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he neither faints nor is he weary. And his understanding is unsearchable. So what God is saying that I am the creator of it all. I create what's good. I create whatever I want in my world. I create the ends of the earth. And don't think I'm hiding or weak because I neither faint. those who have no might. 
He increases their strength. I remember years ago, before President Barack Obama hit the scene, we were downtown Los Angeles and we were at a fundraising event for then the candidate was Jesse Jackson. And we were at that event. And every time I read this scripture, I kind of think about that event because it was something powerful that took place. I got a chance to rub elbows with some people that I've read about and seen on television. I, I met Jane Fonda and a lot of other people. But just uh, before Jesse came to speak, Mariah Carey sung this beautiful lyrics. And I don't have it verbatim, but somewhere in the midst of it, it says something like this, that when all of your strength is gone, and then a hero will come along. And before his work is through, he will find the hero that lies within you. He will be your hero, but yet and still, he will start doing some things that will bring out the hero in you. So this scripture says, he give power to the weak, and those who have no strength, he increases their strength. God brings out the hero in every one of us. He gives us strength. As a matter of fact, the verse in the Paul writes this, he says that, 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 that in your weakness, there is my strength. And Dr. King put it like this here. Sometimes, only when it is dark enough can you see the stars. <laughs> He'll bring out your strength in the midst of your most troubling moment. You will find that God will give you the power to carry on. Amen. He gives strength to the weak. Yes, and then he says this here, listen to verse 30. And even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. Ah. Now what is he saying is this. Those that we see as being strong, the young, the young men, they think that they can make it on their own. And we need to understand that we can't do nothing on our own. And the more you attempt to do it, you will discover that I don't care how strong you think you are, you will utterly fall. You will utterly fall. We can't make it in this world by ourselves. We need the Lord. Now, as we come to verse 31, which is the uh, last verse in chapter 40. I'm going to focus a little time here because I want you to comprehend something. Because up until this time, we've been talking about God, who God is. But now I want to shift channels and talk about what God does. Amen. What God does. Yes. As he gives us the strength to carry on. Now there's a portion to this. It's almost like when Jesus was walking around and, and, and somebody uh, touched him. And he said, who touched me? And all these people were around him and those disciples, everybody is touching you. No, he said, who touched me? Because this particular touch was different than all the other touches. So who touched me? Somebody got in touch with Jesus and Jesus could feel the touch. And so he said, who touched me? And there was a lady, she was sick and she had been sick a long time. She had an issue of blood and had been bleeding a long time. And she touched Jesus. She asked for healing. You know what Jesus said? And your faith your faith has made you whole. So he implores faith for cure, for healing. And now, he says when we are weak and no strength. My favorite verse 
is this. How do we receive? God is going to tell us how to receive strength. And then he's going to explain the different kinds of strengths that we will have during the various phases of our lives. But this is how you receive strength. And really, I can close the sermon down with this right here. He says, the young men will faint, they will fall, they will be exhausted. But, somebody say but. but. Say it one more time. But. They that wait on the Lord, yes. praise God, yes. shall renew their strength. Yes. I can stop right there. That's what we call shouting time. Amen. Yes. You see, the secret of, re of requiring strength is not on your own effort. Not on what you can accomplish, not with your mind, not with your spirit, or with your body. What you need to do is just... Anybody ever had to wait on the main man? How you had to wait on the main man? They say sometimes he don't come when you want him. Is that it is 
sureness. Amen. It's not that it's possible, but it's sureness. Meaning that surely it's going to take place. I have that faith. Amen. I have that faith. And that's why when that woman touched Jesus, she had faith. And as soon as she touched Jesus with her faith, surely she was going to be healed. Amen. She's going to be healed. And what I love about this scripture, it also, it makes this implication that waiting is trusting in God. Amen. Do you have the confidence in God? Yes. Do you know that God is able? Yes. Do you have the confidence in his ability? Do you have the confidence in his reliability? God tells us he's able. He's able. He's able. Yes, he is. And then he ends it with this here. Those that wait on the Lord shall renew. So waiting also means renewing. Yes. Anybody need a recharge? <laughs> Anybody need re-energizing? Anybody need to throw off some old stuff and put on something new? Yes. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. And Macedonia, let me tell you something. We need to be, we, we, we need to become the new Macedonia. Amen. The recharge. We, we, we should have learned some lessons during this year pandemic. Every trial should teach you something. You shouldn't want to go back to the old stuff anyway. You need to go forward with a newness, a new love, a new appreciation for people, a new reason to believe that God brought us through. Amen. Amen. No more egotism. Playing church. Trying to be big and important. No, 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 no. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. God will carry you through. Now, it says, once you wait on the Lord, here's a few things that are going to happen, then I'm going to let you go. He says that they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. And guess what? It says that they're going to mount up with wings as eagles. <laughs> oh, praise his holy name. With my new strength, my new rhythm. See, I can't fly on my own. But when God renew me, I can mount up and I can just fly away like an eagle. Amen. And you know what flying away means and mounting up? Is that Christians, you should have something in you that gives you the ability to rise above every circumstance that come in your way. You should be able to rise above. You know, I learned a, a very good lesson. I read it, but you know how you read the Bible and you kind of miss it in something. Every now and then you kind of key in on something. And during this journey through the Bible, those Pharisees would be coming after Jesus. You all, you all been through it. You, you're on that journey with me, right? And you see, they be just pecking at him, pecking at him, and coming after him. And Jesus, he made a very interesting statement. They asked him, well, they are listening to you, Jesus, as you're talking, and you know they don't like you, but you keep on talking about them right in the midst of their face and talking about stuff that they don't like. And they were getting afraid of that. So they asked Jesus, well, what should we do? You know what Jesus said? Ignore. <laughs> Ignore. He says, just put on your wings, rise up, and go above it. You understand what I'm saying? Fly, you got to fly above some stuff that come your way. You know, I don't know what happened to my yard, but I've been trying to water it and keep it going nice. And then I looked out in the yard and there's a big brown spot. Right on this side, there's another big brown spot. I said, how did that happen? Nevertheless, I went to Home Depot and I got to all that I need, some seeds and everything, and I put it all down. And thinking everything is all right. I'm going to come back and that's going to be green just like the other portion. And I came home, and I don't know, it seemed like every bird in America <laughs> was there. I was going to get some 
dirt, you put over it, you know, you got a couple of them. But I didn't get the dirt in time. They ate up all of my seeds, they made. And they started pecking down grasses all over them, everywhere. I mean, they've been having a party. So I decide, big old me, you know, little old bird. I'm gonna go out there and take care of that situation, these birds. Right? I walked out there, you know what those birds did? They flapped their wings and flew away. They rose above their situation. They got, they had wings like eagles, and they just flapped them and flew away. And we gotta be able to do that. Praise God. We got to be able to just flap our wings and, and rise above a lot of things that are going to come in our life. You see, because God wants us to say that the people can see that renewed strength. It's, you know, when you get down in the mud and start fighting with those who want to start a fight with you, with a Pharisee, and you out there fighting, fussing, and cussing, amen. And somebody come by, they don't know which one is the fool. That's why you have to rise up and be above the situation. Be above a lot of things that come your way. So he says that you need to put on wings. Amen. I believe I can fly. Amen. I believe that I can touch the sky. I read a sermon a long time ago, and it was very interesting. I was in full of theological seminary, and we were doing what we call homiletics. And then, somebody had written a sermon, and we would have to critique them. And one that I had to uh, critique, it had the title, Above the Snake Line. Mm. Above the Snake Line. And it was a very interesting message, because in the sermon, he said something that is true. Do you know that if you want to get rid of a snake, <laughs> all you got to do is put him on an airplane and let him go on a flight? Snakes can't live at certain altitudes. Amen. They die right away. They can't. And so that's why a lot of times in the mountains, if you're out in the forest, it's better to go to a higher level. There are certain levels that the snakes can go to. Are you with me? Yeah. So what I'm trying to tell you is that when Satan starts sending these little snakes in your life, you got to rise up above the snake. <laughs> you know what I'm and so what I'm saying is that we got to be able to fly away and get away from every little challenge that comes in our life and don't put our dog in every fight. Yeah. Now, another Part of the scripture says that you, not only you, will you be able to fly, but you will also be able to run. You see, renewed strength would give you the, and running just means moving forward in a swift pace. Sometimes we are a little slow in getting going. But Paul makes it very clear. He says that I press toward the mark of the prize of the higher calling that's in Jesus Christ. You see, where Paul got the strength to go forward with all of his challenges, he got it from looking toward the Lord. Amen. And we got to keep running forward. Paul talks about life as a race. And he says, now I finished my course. I finished running my course. And that's why I'm looking for the prize of the higher calling in Christ Jesus. He got it from waiting on the Lord. He got it from the Lord. He got it from depending on the Lord. Because God is the unending source of all that we need. So keep on going forward. Don't allow the things that come up in your life to cause you to go backwards. Go forward with the Lord. Now, I'm not going to spend much time there because I'm already exhausted when I use it in there. But I want to go to one last portion. He says that this renewed strength will give you the ability to fly. It will give you the ability to run. And then it says that you shall walk also. Now, walk is different than running. Amen. 
Walk is when you kind of slow it down. You know when those people got those nice walking, they be strolling. You know, they, they put a little accent in their walking. Amen. I remember when I was young, you know, when I came to Los Angeles, out of the country, and I got with all these city boys, and they had me walking like that. Then I went back home and I got in the Marine Corps. Yeah. And they had me walking back. Like it changed my walk. And so when you have renewed strength, you got a new walk. And you're walking with the Lord. And God calls you to walk in a different way. People can see that you're not walking by yourself, you're walking with the Lord. Let me share with you this in closing. I remember listening to a sermon by a preacher, and it says that a man was sitting on the porch. And as he was uh, just sitting there having a nice day, he looked across the street from his house, and walking down the sidewalk was a big bulldog. And he was just walking going about his business. And then all of a sudden, a little dog came out of the gate and started barking at the big bulldog. He just was pecking at him. Then he would jump back to a safe distance. And he just pecking at him. The bulldog just kept on walking. And the little dog just kept on picking at him. And he just kept on walking. Soon the man says he watched that go on for a long period of time. And eventually he watched the bulldog go down, walk down the street and go down until he had disappeared. And the man went in his house and he got on his knees and he said, Lord, give me whatever it is that the bulldog got. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> People are going to pick on you as long as you live. But as long as you got what the bulldog got, you keep your attention on God and you do not allow their little petty actions to get you off of where God has you. God is carrying you to a higher level and God will give you the strength to carry